Today we're in the podcast setup and we're going to be talking about the equipment that I brought on the Tour de Mont Blanc. So the Tour de Mont Blanc, the route that we did, it was like a hundred mile trek. It took us over seven days through three different countries and it was an amazing experience. But equipment was absolutely essential. We needed to think through every single thing that we brought on this trip because one, we didn't want to be too overpacked and two, we definitely didn't want to be left high and dry waiting on the essentials that we're going to be able to get us through each day. So let's jump in and talk about all the equipment that I brought for a seven day trek along the Tour de Mont Blanc. So obviously, I had to bring a backpack. I have a Gosma Gear G420 40 liters ultra light backpack that I've had for the last year. It's a great piece of kit. It's really roomy, loads of space, and I've trekked hundreds of miles with this thing. So it made sense to stick with the backpack that I knew very well. I think it's around 160 pounds right now. It's a great bag. I would highly recommend it. If you want to learn more about it, I have a review about it on my channel. So go and check that out when you can. So as for hiking poles, I actually didn't bring hiking poles on this trip, but that's only because I brought a pretty hefty camera tripod with me. It's the Manfrotto B3 tripod. So I sort of use that as my trekking poles. But if you're not a filmmaker, then don't bring a tripod, bring actual trekking poles, guys. Every single person I saw on this trip had trekking poles. They're so useful. If they save you 10% energy every step you take, think about how much energy that is over seven days of hiking. It's definitely worth doing. It's a good investment to make. And you can buy them in Chamonix or in any local village. They don't have to be super expensive. You need to bring mountain trekking poles, guys. It's an absolute essential. I brought a rain jacket with me guys. Berghaus raincoat, it's a medium. It's more of a mountaineering coat than a hiking coat, but it really kept me dry throughout this whole trip. Really high quality, and yeah, I'd highly recommend it. If people are interested in it, I'll eventually do a review on this coat as well. I had thought about bringing my Patagonia jacket, the one that you've seen me hike for miles and miles in, but it's got it's getting a little bit old now. It's nearly two years old, it's got some stains. Thought I'd just go with a new bright red one instead. So yeah, I really like this jacket, it kept me dry all the way through. It's again, it's like a Berghaus mountaineering jacket. I'll leave a link for it in down in the description. It's really roomy. It's got pit zips. It's got loads of uh, space for just stuff in your pockets. And yeah, it's great for ventilation and I'm a big fan of it. So yeah, I might do a review on it someday soon. So guys, down jackets. As you may know, I visited the Rab factory earlier this year and they actually gave me a Rab down jacket. And guys, this is the best down jacket I've ever had. It's clearly a winter jacket. It keeps me warm no matter the weather. Yeah, it's full of duck feathers and it's a really well-designed piece of kit. It hasn't bled a single feather yet. No feathers have spiked out. Great jacket, highly recommend. It. I've worn it on every single trek that I've done since I've been to their factory and I don't think I'll be changing it out anytime soon. It's super warm, super comfortable and I think it's kind of stylish as well. I know it's green which is a little bit of a strange color but hey you know I've rocked it around town and out with my friends as well as out in the mountains. So yeah great jacket, really warm, really comfortable and it packs down super light and I'll leave a link for it in the description below. Next up I brought a Rab hoodie. It's kind of like a sun hoodie but it's a little bit thicker than the sort of standard t-shirt ones you find on Amazon. Yeah it's just really warm, really comfortable and a nice way to get out of the sun. And one thing I really like about this jumper is that they've got holes for your thumbs so you can easily cover up your hands away from the sun and just get that extra bit of warmth while you're hiking. So guys, I brought four, maybe even five t-shirts on this trek, guys. This was way too much. I'm going to be honest, you probably could get away with two t-shirts on this trek. Just buy two high quality, expensive t-shirts and just stick with them. Have one that's clean and one that's dirty. Wear the dirty one when you're hiking, wear the clean one when you're in the huts. Loads of people were wearing the same t-shirt every single day and for some reason we decided to bring four or five with us thinking that was ultra light but it's not ultra light guys it's unnecessary and all it does is take up bag space so yeah learn from me take a small amount of t-shirts i also brought a woolly hat guys just in case it got cold we uh had these north face woolly hats we've had them for years and would highly recommend them yeah i also brought my battle worn p6 patagonia hat i did a review on this trucker hat the other day i really love this hat this is an awesome hat and i've worn it on pretty much every single adventure since i've started this youtube channel so yeah this kept me out of the sun but it's also so really good at ventilation, loads of air passes through. And if you want to learn more about it, then check out the video. I'll link it in the description or in the top right now. It's a great hat, would highly recommend. So guys, I brought two pairs of shorts with me, two Puma shorts that I got on Amazon. To be honest, I could have got away with just having one. I didn't need the spare at all. Uh, I brought one pair of trousers with me as well. These are the Patagonia trekking trousers. I'll put them up on screen now. I've had these for a little bit now. They've got loads of pockets. They're really stretchy. They're battle worn and there's no rips in them, which is amazing. And they're just a great thing just to have as a backup in case it's 
a windy or rainy day. I think I wore these once while I was on the trip. I also did also bring a pair of trackies, a pair of Gymshark trackies that I just wear all the time. Those were for sleeping in, but to be honest, you could probably just wear your shorts when you sleep in them. So if you've got the space, bring a pair of trackies just to bum around in and just hang out in when you're chilling. But if you don't have the space, then just wear your shorts. The lighter your pack is, the better your pack is in this case. I didn't do this all the way through my trek, I'll be honest. I did have some luxury items, but, but guys, I suffered because of it. You know, you want a lighter backpack, trust me. Cool, so I had a medical kit full of plasters and supplies. This is pretty self-explanatory. So I also brought a micro light towel. This is just an ultra light towel to use while in the huts after showers. I brought two or three lip salves with me, guys. I get really dry lips. I get really sunburnt lips. So this is just a small thing that goes a long way. I actually end up giving one of these away to a passing hiker who is really suffering. So guys, I brought one pair of sock liners. These are the absolute key to not getting blisters on your feet. You wear this thin pair of sock liners and you put your normal hiking socks over the top. And then when your shoe rubs against the back of your heel, rubs against your skin, this sock liner it acts as almost like another layer of skin and stops your actual skin from getting covered in blisters. Yeah, it's a small hack and it just really helps me. So I brought that on the trek and I wore them every single day of the trek underneath my uh, different pairs of hiking socks. And speaking on hiking socks, I think I brought a maximum of three pairs of socks on this trip. And to be honest, I could have done it in two. Again, have a clean pair, have a dirty pair, or just get some really expensive, high quality merino wool socks that dry out really quickly. What you want to do is buy less, but spend more on the things that you Buy. Don't buy four t-shirts or four pairs of socks, buy one really expensive, really high quality pair of socks or one high quality t-shirt for this trek because the better quick kit you have, the better experience you're gonna have and the less you're actually gonna need to bring. So I had one balaclava to cover my face up in case things got really cold. I actually had to wear this in Switzerland on the buses because they still enforce masks out there. I also had a bag of snacks with me guys. I had baby fruit food, I had breakfast bars and I had some like salty nuts packs just because snacks are essential and having a range of snacks is always good. I used to just carry like sugary breakfast bars with me but after a while even those become quite sickly so it's nice to have a good range of stuff so water bottles we just had 1.5 liter standard water bottles guys we bought them when we were out there i know some people have big camelback drinks and those do look great but i'm fine with the standard plastic bottle i also brought two kendall mint cakes with me these are just a really good thing to have when you're on an uphill and you just need that kick of sugar to get you over the hill just a great little snack there um got that straight from mountain warehouse before i left in terms of sleeping guys i brought a sleeping bag liner i did not bring a sleeping bag that's because we were staying in the huts while we were on this hike generally they they provide big pillows and duvets but these pillows and duvets aren't always the cleanest you don't really know who's been using them before you so it's a good idea to bring a sleeping bag liner it's a little bit of consistency when you're out hiking it reminds you of home it's something you know it's your sleeping bags so when you get in it and you're cocooned in it after a long day it kind of feels familiar which is just a nice thing because every single day you're sleeping in a new place so yeah bring your sleeping bag liner it did genuinely really help me out here and i also brought along a blow up pillow i I love this blow up pillow. I actually have two of these things, one's for me, one's for my girlfriend. I have a little cover to go over mine that makes it even softer. And yeah, I absolutely love this pillow. I had it just in case they didn't provide any pillows while on this trek or if the pillows that they provided were gonna be really horrible. You know, I just wanted to have a backup, really nice quality one with me. Um, just so that I could get good sleep while I was on this trip because guys rest and sleep is so important when you're doing these crazy big days So yeah, take a pillow take a sleeping bag liner and also get yourself a sleeping mask I brought one of these I think I got this off an airplane many many years ago I brought it along with me just in case I need to sleep in the day or if it was just really bright where we wanted to sleep Or if people had head torches on I had this with me the whole time and I definitely used it once or twice while on this trek In a lot of these huts they do provide crocs So if you want to save the space then don't bring these but I was just a little bit worried about you know like foot fungus or farukas and just anything that you could be passed from one person to another so I just wanted to make sure I had my own you know there's normally like one shower or two or three showers to serve you know a hundred or two hundred people so you're kind of coming into contact with every single person in that position so it's nice to have a pair of sliders that you know are clean that you know are yours to be able to wear in the showers just to keep your, your feet dry keep your feet clean and not accidentally pick up anything and take it home and sliders in my opinion is an essential but I know that's kind of controversial so you know bring sliders if you think similarly to me if you're not that worried just bring a thick pair of salt i brought these thick pair of yellow mountaineering gloves i bought these last year when i climbed mont blanc and i absolutely love them they keep my hands warm all the way through the hike and i only really had to wear them two or three times especially on that last day when i was going through the snowy sections it was good to have them then and underneath these yellow thick gloves i also have black glove liners again this is something that i got from climbing mont blanc last year it's just good to have a pair of glove liners that can you know slide on underneath these yellow gloves but also a pair of gloves that you can just wear to kind of protect yourself from the sun 
and protect yourself from you know wind when it is cold and I've got really bad circulation in my hands anyways so it's just a small thing that just makes me a lot warmer I also brought a pair of sunglasses I bought these when I was out there they're category 4 sunglasses and they're a really good pair of sunglasses uh, they definitely kept me out of the sun kept stop me from getting headaches especially in the snowy sections they're just top quality so as for the, like toiletries I had a toothbrush I had toothpaste I did have a shower gel with me and I did have a conditioner with me I had anti back for my hands I had biodegradable wipes and between me and my brother we bought a big spray bottle of sun cream so as for electronics guys I brought a pair of headphones and two power banks these were to charge my phone I had my iPhone 11 with me as well I was hiking with my brother but there's definitely periods where we were both a little bit tired from talking and needed a bit of time to ourselves need a bit of a break so it's good to have headphones good to have a few Joe Rogan episodes downloaded or whatever podcast of your choice I'm really liking the no film school podcast right now I had loads of those episodes downloaded for the trek uh, and it was nice just to put in my headphones and just switch off and just listen to that so yeah would definitely recommend bringing a pair of headphones especially if you're hiking in a group but also if you're by yourself then headphones are an absolute must so what gear did we buy on route so the two things that we bought on route one was a bag cover as you may have seen in the full video on my channel I had to buy a rain cover along the way around I thought my backpack was going to be fine I thought that a little bit of rain wouldn't get it wet but I saw that every single person around me had a rain cover no matter what even if they had an expensive nice bag they still had a rain cover so I realized that actually no matter what it's always good to bring a rain cover and buy one so we went into a local town and I bought this Patagonia rain cover for, for my Gossamer Gear G420 backpack yeah and that was a really good addition it meant that my bag didn't get wet at all throughout the whole trip and the other thing that we bought on route was medical tape me and my brother both struggled with our knees Joe especially struggled so he had to wrap up his knees in medical tape and some other medical stuff that we bought along the way as you can tell I sort of packed light where I could but I also kind of went overboard a little bit you can see that I had a big heavy backpack throughout the entire trip really clothes really end up weighing you down on this trek so just really put a lot of time into thinking what clothes you're going to bring try to buy the lightest clothes that you can and yeah just do everything you can to for your backpack to be light and as far as camping goes we didn't do it we didn't bring any camping equipment with us at all we left our sleeping bags and our tents at home we just wanted to live in the huts because i do think the huts are kind of part of this experience if you haven't seen it already go and check out my full 25 minute film that documents my entire tour de mont blanc trek it was an epic experience and an epic journey and, an, and i'm going to say it's an epic video too but yeah guys that's it i'll see you in the next video very very soon